Hi everyone, welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade and today we're going to talk about the presidency of John Adams. Now Adams was the first vice president serving two terms under George Washington. But when Washington stepped down, Adams ran with Charles Pinckney, who was a Federalist, against Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr, who were Republicans. Now, the rules were a little different back then. There was no designation among the candidates for president or vice president. Rather, the electors would just cast their ballots, and then the person receiving the most would become president, and the runner-up would become vice president. Now, you might be able to predict some problems with this, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the future, but here's an example. Adams received his electoral votes from the North, totaling 71. Jefferson received his electoral votes from the South, totaling 68. Adams was the winner, a Federalist president. Jefferson, who came in second, was his vice president. He was a Republican. Now, back to Adams. Adams had a reputation for being a short man. Certainly, his reputation is not as tall as Washington's, but he was five foot seven. Now, standing between Washington, who was a little over six feet tall, and Jefferson, who was six foot two, that would give the appearance of his shortness, but really, he was an average height for the day. Now, as a side note, this also goes for Napoleon, who surrounded himself with bodyguards who were all over six feet tall. So his portraits make him seem short, but he was five foot six. Now, of course, I'm six foot five, so he looks short next to me. Anyway, let's talk about the events that occurred during Adams' presidency. I think we need to actually visit one of the big locations in this story. So let's take our jet and go. Ha! <laughs> Here we are in Paris, the city of lights. Not too far from where I'm standing is where the next story took place. You see, during this time, our country was in a dispute with France because they believed we were attempting to help the British in their war effort against them. Well, to punish us, France began seizing our ships that were carrying cargo to England. Trying to fix our relationship, President Adams sent a group of ambassadors to Paris. When they got there, they were shocked to learn that the French officials would not meet with them. Instead, three agents demanded a bribe from the Americans. Now, the names of these agents were never given out, so we only know them as X, Y, and Z. When our ambassadors told Adams what had happened, he was furious, so much so that he had urged Congress to prepare for war. This became known as the XYZ Affair. Well, that about does it for Paris, so let's head back home. Whew, I hope there's no turbulence on this flight. So the news gets out about what happened in Paris, and many Americans became suspicious of aliens, specifically the Europeans who supported the French Revolution. They were questioning whether or not these residents would remain loyal to the U.S. if we went to war with France. So in 1798, the Alien and Sedition Acts were passed. This law gave the president the power to imprison or deport those who he thought were dangerous. Adams, of course, was a strong supporter of this law. Ah, back on solid ground. Now, the Democratic Republicans were opposed to this law, and they viewed it as tyranny. Now, since they couldn't change it in the Capitol, Jefferson wrote to Virginia and Kentucky and got them to pass resolutions that declared the Alien and Sedition Act to be unconstitutional. These resolutions cemented the principle of states' rights and the idea that a state could nullify a federal law that went against the Constitution. Meanwhile, the pressure to go to war with France was building, but instead of fighting, Adams sent an ambassador to seek peace. In 1800, a treaty was signed to stop the attacks on our ships. Now, while it's a good thing that we didn't go to war, different members of the Federalist Party disagreed with Adams' decision. This would lead to a weakened party, and by the 1800 election, this would be a big deal, but that's a story for another day. If you found this video informative, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for Virtual History 360. Thank you.